Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again here at The Hub, presented by Capital Workspaces. We have a very special, energetic guest here today, Tony Gazi from the Tony Gazi Real Estate Group. Hey, Tony, how are you? I'm good, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad that you were able to make it. Thank you so much for having me oh, here. No. I am so grateful. No, thank you for um, taking the time. We really value your time. So just a little history. We recently had an event in our Spring Valley location for Stroll Magazine. And Tony and his real estate group was featured there. And so we had a lot of guests sign up to um, be our guests here at The Hub. So just to give you a little background, Tony Gazi's group says that they believe that real estate is about much more than location. And homes are so much more than than their features. Their unique holistic approach to buying and selling real estate incorporates the physical, the emotional, and spiritual aspects of your journey. All right. So, Tony, yes. born in Lebanon. I am indeed. Okay. So, how long? Tell me about Lebanon. Never been. Yes. Middle East. Middle East. Okay. So, um, right next to Israel. Okay. Um, and then you have Syria on the other side, so like kind of sandwiched in. Okay. I, I was born there, and I moved to the U.S. in God, 1995. Okay. I was 15 years old. Yeah, and spoke zero English. Zero English. Straight into high school as a freshman. In America. In America. How did if, you manage? How did your family manage that? So I had an uncle that's been here since 1980s. Okay. And I guess he sponsored us through like the whole visa thing to okay. come here. And like that's how the the um the whole journey began. Okay. And but yeah, we spoke zero English. Like we spoke French and Arabic. But okay. when we moved here, the school did not have French or Arabic. Okay. So as a freshman in high school was. First year is quite interesting. Okay. To just try to understand language through body language. Yeah. Through guessing. Yeah. But then, like we're kids, so we pick up the language pretty quickly and voila. Yeah. I have learned, uh, just to share, um, whatever languages I learn, I'm not fluent in anything else other yeah. than English, of sure. course, but I've tried to learn the diverse languages that come because I'm in retail and I meet so many people and other cultures do appreciate it when you try. Totally. We really do. Yeah, they totally. really do. So I try to be as knowledgeable as possible. So, and as plus with you being thrown into the immersion of the United States, what area did you move to when you first came? Uh, so we, we, we moved to Fairfax, Virginia. Oh, nice yeah, area. So, yeah, not too bad. We were there for a year and then we moved to Loudoun County. Okay. Uh, before Loudoun County is now because now it's very completely built up. Okay. Uh, and then I've been in Arlington, Alexandria, but Washington, D.C., which is my home. I love Washington. Yeah, it's changed in, in the years. It's very beautiful. A lot of construction still going on. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of regentrification. And I've been here for 15 years. Okay. So, um, in D.C. Okay. Yeah, and like going back just quickly about um, when you mention any word in other language, they appreciate just the sound of it, right? It makes them feel home immediately. Even mm. if like you say hello in your language, that's the only word you know, immediately it brings back like the familiarity mm. of their own. So Thank it, you it for makes that. a connection. How do you say hello in Arabic? Arabic. <laughs> M-A-R-H-A-B-A. Marhaba. Marhaba. Yes. Marhaba. Marhaba. Thank you. There you go. So oh, wow. Any, any Arab language will understand. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, any Arab country will understand marhaba. marhaba. Thank you. How yes. do you say goodbye? Al-Wada. 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 Thank you. Oh, look You're at welcome. me. Yes. Okay, look yes. at me, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say marhaba to any Middle Eastern, okay. it, like, it just makes, it brings home to them. Yes. And they feel immediately like yes. the veil or the... The facade is, yeah. you know, it makes it comfortable. Because we feel like they're, because language yes. is the connector, it makes a connection between you and that person. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm talking to someone that speaks fluent Spanish, even in retail, I'm waiting for the break in their language to say, oh, I know what they're talking about. Yes. I, I know, understand them. And I research words to better be able to serve them. Yes. Okay, so your family is here. Yes. Parents, all... How many family members are here with you? Uh, so I have mom and dad, okay. uh, and then I have one older brother. Okay. And that's it, just like the four of us. Okay. Uh, I mean, I have some aunts and uncles that have been here, you know, for a long time. Okay. Uh, but 
yes, we all came together as a small family. Okay. And what was the family's, I guess, industry or what were you connected to by um, coming to America? Was was your parents in real estate as well? Or? No, I come from a very humble family, super humble family. Over uh, here, yes. Like might I say, you know, if I say poor, but go poor ahead, family. Go ahead. Um, but like we came here just for the next, you know, best thing. Like okay. we hear a lot about America, yes. a lot of opportunities. And it's been a great great experience and a great adventure. So I'm very grateful for their decision to come here. Okay. And to begin a new, you know, chapter of our life as kids and now as adults. Yes. So. Have we lived up to the hype? Because we've I've only known America. Yes. Never really checked. <laughs> well listen, this is from the perspective of, of um uh, of like an international like person who's never been in the U.S., there's always that hype. The U.S. everything. Oh, there's yeah. an ease about it, right? You go there and you make millions of money. Oh immediately. yeah, the next day. Yes, totally. <laughs> like it's always. And then you get here and like you realize, wow, it's not that ideal drawn mm-hmm. image by somebody else. Mm. Um, and of course, my dad didn't have an education, like so he worked at McDonald's for the first few okay. years and made like four dollars an hour, and he supported all of our, you know, the whole wow. family. So it was quite quite uh, an experience. We didn't know like any better because that was our life. Yeah. But we could see when you're at school talking to kids and they ask you questions and they go on vacation. We didn't have any of that. Yeah. But we always had love at home. Awesome. So that's something that's like huge. My parents are so loving um, and super supportive, you know, emotionally. I'm so glad that you had that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when did you get interested in real estate? Wait a minute. In the United States, what college or area did you um, attend school? Yes. Um, so I went to Marymount University. Oh, yeah, all go- Virginia. I, I, yes, Virginia, uh, which is in Arlington. Uh, so I did my undergrad there uh, and then I got my MBA. Okay. Uh, and then like from there on, I worked, uh, I was working at a bank, Capital One Bank. Um, it actually used to be called Chevy Chase Bank. Okay. And then it got purchased. I thought by- I recognized you that way. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've served you probably a few times when I was like 20 years younger. <laughs> uh, uh, and then like through there, um, like one of my clients inherited a huge sum of money and they asked me if I would um, like work with them. And like that was my first intro you know, into real estate. Re- Andrew, yeah. I have never had a family, a friend with a whole bunch of money. Sam Michelle, can you? I would. You, I gotta start hanging with you to get those kind of friends. <laughs> yes. But okay, and so that was your introduction. That was my introduction okay. uh, to real estate, uh, and then they did commercial real estate. So I helped them set oh. up the office. Yeah, like we did office buildings and warehouses, uh, and it was more about um, the um, building of it, the construction of it. Right, wow. it wasn't sales. Okay. And I was in that world for eight years. Uh, and then I took a sabbatical for what was supposed to be three months, ended up being a year. Um, and then a good friend of mine who's been in the residential like world for a long time actually approached me to see if I know within my network a friend that can help him with real okay. estate. And then it was a bit uh, a like big light bulb in my in, in 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 my mind. And I told my friend, look, I'm super like um I guess ambitious. I'm happy to help you like for a year, but know that after a year I'm gonna fly on my own. Mm. And this is how it how it happened. Oh, that's an, an incredible story. Thank you. So question, yeah. even though I did study for the Maryland uh, real estate exam, did you does a broker have to be a real estate agent as well? Uh, in order to be a broker, uh, you have to sell at least, uh, I think, real estate for two or three years, like depending on the state. So you have to sell first for two or three years and then apply for your broker license. Okay. Yeah. So um, can we discuss your international relocation um, aspect? Yes. So as uh, I guess as part of me trying to uh, I'll tap into like, you know, getting new clients, um, I've I like literally like knocked on every company's door that I can imagine. And like one of them was the World Bank. Uh, mm-hmm. And I just picked up the phone. I said, hey, you know, um, like, are you willing to have like a real estate that can help your clients, et cetera, et cetera. And like they said, oh, well, like you, sh- you would have, have helped a few clients first. We want to get some reviews from them. Um, and then if, um, if like you did a good job, um, uh, you know, for them, we'll see what we can do. And I was able to get on their preferred realtor list, and I've mm. been on it for the past four or five years. Oh my goodness! Hence, That's my a- international world just opened up. Help clients from every country you can imagine. Some countries I didn't even know existed on this planet. Okay. Um, but it's been a beautiful, true journey of really serving people from all across the globe. So, in your relocation efforts. Because you have to be licensed in a specific state, all of them are trying to come to this area specifically. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. I just want to make sure. So yeah. do you also help them 
of know what the living aspect, but as far as you share with them with the schools in the area, everything. Oh my God, everything. I mean, look, like you have to imagine like you're going to China, for example, for the first time knowing nothing. Yeah. And you're looking to buy a house because you're, uh, whichever company you work for, just um, just relocated there and you know zero. Okay. So yes, we help them from schooling to like trying to understand the market, the, all the values. And just basic service yes. from human to human, just like guide them and handhold them. And yeah. I mean, it's an amazing journey and it fits who I am as a human. Because, oh, I can tell. Thank you. Yeah, you have a very <laughs> specific kindness and charm about yourself. I knew that as soon as I met you at the event. So very, very approachable and you have Th to be there in the service industry. Thank you. And I've learned really to be you in, in any service, any sales, just to be yourself. Because unless you're being yourself, you're attracting people of the facade that you're putting on. Mm. Whatever costume you're putting on, you're attracting people of that vibration. Mm. When you be yourself, really be yourself, and you attract people of your own vibration, and there's always a good synergy. You know what's so interesting when you said that? I remember years ago when I had a very bad relationship and someone said, you attract that in which you are. I said, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this person was a jerk, kind word. That means he said, no, it was something in them that attracted themselves to me, maybe lostness, um, not necessarily the the meanness in them, but it was something that lost that attracted the lostness in me. So yes. I do agree with that. But that, if you put on the facade or the fakeness or the fake you, another fake you will yes. walk by and say, "Hey," and, and hook up and and meet. That is so interesting. Thank you, because like vibration, it lacks. Um, attracts attracts like vibration, and I just learned that as I went and. But it, but it was easy for me to be myself yes. and not to be s some other version of myself. Okay. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's easy for me just to be who I am and not be afraid of being judged or ridiculed or whatever those things that go th through yeah. our mind. It's much easier like for us. Because when you put that costume on, you're dragging mm. weights behind you. Because that's not the real you. No. And then you're finding it, it, it makes a kind of safe space yes. for other people to be themselves. Yes. Once they figure out that, look, I can just oh, take off this yes. and be who I am. You're who you are. And we're most comfortable in that because um, putting up a facade is a lot of work. Totally. And it, it's tiring. Oh, it's tiring. And a lot of, um, I can say, um, creates more physical baggage than we are really aware of. Of course. But I would like to talk about more about your relocation efforts. Sure. When you have your clients, first of all, you're on social media. What Tell everyone where you are on social media. Yes, um, we are on Facebook, Yes, uh, on LinkedIn, also TikTok, uh, and then Instagram. TikTok? Yes. Oh, let me <laughs> you, find that, okay. You, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting better and better doing that. Yeah. That's, that's a whole world. And it's changing. I saw it, it was is. some updates recently to yes. TikTok. Yes. They have it's like some some community guidelines now that they haven't had before. So yes. that's very interesting. But you're making use of everything. We are. We're trying to be as diverse as possible to attract to let people know we're there, we're, we're here to provide a service, and we believe in big believers of the universe that will attract whoever's meant to come our way. Absolutely. So we don't try to over-engineer things. Mm. We make it simple. Make it natural and organic, and we, so to speak. Totally. And we trust in the universe, God, whatever you, however you want to label it. Yeah. yeah. And how large is the, um, I've, I've saw your team, yes. met two of them, yes. very nice women. How Thank large you. is your team? So I have one, two, three, four four agents on my team. Wow. We, it was just formed two years ago. Okay. Uh, and they're all international. Uh, wow. So like one is Scottish, like one is from Peru, and Ooh. like one from the UK and then India. And the fourth one is from the US actually. How do you, how do you, I guess, yes. how do you attract agents or people to work with, with you and your company? How did you formulate your team, so to speak? Yes, that's a good question. I've always felt that I was gonna create a team, but I was very afraid of the idea of being responsible for others, all the work that comes with it, because I was already busy just by myself. Okay. But then I started trusting, you know, I'm really going to speak a lot about the universe because this ahead. is how I am and, and, and how I live. And I just, every time I get an opportunity, like where I have an agent, you know, in a sense, approach me and ask that question, hey, I would like to be on your team or like, let's discuss it. I trusted that the reason that came to me is because there is something for us to do together. Okay. I I did not allow my fears to kind of, mm. like in a sense, like halt that opportunity. Yes. Look, if it works out, it's great. If it doesn't work out, we can both go our separate way in a very amicable way. So it's not the end of the yes. world. Like that's where the non-complication I try to be. I don't want to complicate things. Hey, let's give it a try. Um, 
but I ended up attracting amazing people. Like we are like family. We talk the way we're talking right now. This yeah. is who I am. This is who they are. And it's such a beautiful exchange of energies. You know what? Tell me. What you just um, voiced is literally Capital Workspaces. Okay. When we came together here, we didn't know each other, but the team here in both offices is literally yeah. Mark as a director has given us the freedom to come together Lord kind of inhibitions because yes. people are very artistic, yes. free to be who they are and contribute what they can to the growth of the company and even the podcast studio. He had a desire to start the podcast studio and he worked on it. He just said, this is my vision. This is the dream that I have. I want to benefit the residences here and the um, neighboring community. And that's what we, that's what we caught, re- reeled out and caught you. I love it. <laughs> but I also want to, I love what you have on your page, yes. you're very comprehensive in your explanation. You say, we top, setting your real estate goals, we tap into the energetics of creation and the universe, providing our clients with a comprehensive approach to buying and selling. It transcends typical marketing and transaction methods and focus on the core belief that everything is connected and we are creators of our own reality. I, I can see that. Your story alone showed how you were a creator of your own reality. Like you put things in motion. You um, put your fear aside from another country yes. and came in here. And I guess, quote unquote, whatever the American dream is, yes. is relative to each person. You formulated that for yourself. Tell me what your parents think of your success. Because it is it's success. Yes. I mean, look, for the longest while, um, like there was this kind of struggle because, in, you know, f- uh, from their perspective, um, they have, or I, or like I should say, parents always have their own image of where their kids <laughs> should be. You know, yeah. they draw that road oh, yeah. for them. Oh yeah, and I think that's part of like our society's. Um, Hopefully, like reconstruction of those ideas to to allow the kids to be themselves. Yes, I I, I did not have that. They said I have to be an engineer, a doctor, whatever. I'm male, Middle East, all these preconceived notions of where mm-hmm. it should be. Um, so they weren't really excited about like some of the ideas that I um, um, initially started. But but now at this point in the past few years, they've understood the path that I, they see it from a different perspective and they're yeah. so proud of me and super excited. And of course, I'm in contact with them every day. And um, it brings them joy to see me happy, to see me where I am. Oh, and absolutely. we're not speaking of like financial success. We're just speaking of being in a space where I'm content, where yes. I love to help people, where I get so much joy and reward just by God. I mean, we're guys to each other every day. Yes. And like real estate is beyond. I mean, we mean every word we say on the site that, um, that um, it goes beyond the house, the, the like the real estate, the numbers. We understand our clients. We make a connection emotionally with them. I cannot tell you how many clients I have that are best. I mean, every single person, we fall in love with each other. <laughs> I leave voice memos on text all the time for all of my clients. And like once we're done with the whole transaction, they literally have withdrawals. They're like, we want to hear your voice again because oh. you build that. Con- yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a definite it's a re- connection. It's a relationship. Oh yeah, it is. And we go in it deep, like, and we're open and it's an amazing. Oh, yeah. Time. You can tell that. I could tell that as soon as I met you. Now, you are married. I am married. And his name is? Uh, Craig Hollinger. Okay. Is he in real estate too? He is not in real estate. He's on sabbatical. Okay. He was a bartender for 25 years. Okay. And he just took a sabbatical like for a bit and he's going to go into training, like weight training, uh, or I guess, uh, what's the word, where you train people to lift and stuff. Um, oh, per- I know. Weight li- personal um, training. Personal training. Yes, oh, yes. we just had a personal trainer here today so we can make a connection. Maybe, um, yes. Cap- yeah. Totally. I'm telling you, we could make some <laughs> connections in Capital Workspaces. So how did you guys meet? Uh, at the gym. Okay. Uh, but let me tell you, <laughs> I know it's such a cliche, but I've seen, <laughs> but I've seen him there for three years and I was not like, there was no, we, we just did not speak or anything, but like one day we met and, and the whole thing, you know, um, the stars, um, you know, aligned. But the cool thing about him is guess where he's from? Where? He's from the U S from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. No. I swear Are to God. Are you serious? I swear to you. Wow. When I met him, he said, I'm Lebanese too. I'm looking no, at him. No, I know. Lebanese. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you're white, you're green-eyed, <laughs> blonde hair. You're- we don't have that in my country. I know, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> and uh, he ended up being from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. That's cool. Totally. Oh, wow. So where, yeah. Um, yeah. does he have... Uh, 
any family in the D.C. area with him or all of his family still in Pennsylvania? Um, it is all in Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, all their family is there. Okay, and how long have you been married? God, 10 years now. Really? We, I mean, like, we've been together for 10 years, but uh, engaged for three years. Like, we're not officially married. Okay. You know, I call him a husband because— when I go into a relationship, I'm in. Okay. And to me, is a husband. But okay. we haven't made it official yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, so we've been together for 10 years. Okay. We have five dogs. Oh, my. Oh, um, what are... Oh my, Ruby, <laughs> yeah. what are your dogs? What kind of dogs? Uh, so they... Five in one household. Yes. We, <laughs> we actually bought a house to have a yard specifically for the dogs. Okay. We moved to Spring Valley for the kids, what we say. Okay. Um, so... So they are um, all rescued, had Aww. very bad lives. Aww. I mean, every from trauma to complete neglect. Like and they love you like no other because they've been rescued. Totally. I mean, whenever you rescue a dog, they understand and feel the energy and the appreciation and the love they give you, the teachings they give you every day. It's, oh, man. They help center you. You can have oh. a bad day and you walk in. Oh, dog. And they just center you immediately. And cats totally hey, ignore oh. you. <laughs> cats are so independent. Men are, don't take this personally. Men yes. are like dogs. Women, <laughs> cats are like women. Women is like, okay, I see you, but I don't see you. But yeah. a dog will yes. knock you over when you come out. And you got five. five. Five rescues. Five rescues. Three big and two small. Okay. We got two from the U.S. Virgin Islands from St. Croix because we go there a lot and we love the island and... On like one of our trips, we just landed and we happened to hear about this dog. Literally, we were there for 12 days. The second day, Craig threw a fit because he wanted to adopt this dog. I'm like, no, we already have two dogs, Craig. What are you saying? The day would not begin until we got that dog. We filled out the paperwork the next day we, we got it. Wait a minute. Him. How did you hear about the dog? Um, through a... A uh, friend of ours, like who was there, like by the shelter, and he just saw the sign and he saw the dog there, and, and he knew Craig loves dogs, so he mentioned it to him, which now we think it was a trick. <laughs> to have it adopted. Set up. And set up, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we ended up adopting two from there, Aww. and then three from DC over the course of five years. Oh my goodness. I know. I know the dog park loves you guys. You take all of them. So, go ahead. Dog. No, we don't take them to the, god, the dog park. We keep them in the backyard. We turf the backyard so it's clean. Oh. Yeah, so it's grass turf for them. There's no mud or anything. Oh, man. So we let them play outside. And, oh, that's so neat. I know. Okay, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, um, family, uh, your older brother. Yes. Real estate or no? Yeah, no, he's an IT. IT. I don't know the whole thing, but maybe network something. Okay. I, I'm the same thing. <laughs> a little I bit. Know. All I know is IT. It's something yeah, over there. IT. Okay. Stuff. And your parents, um, what are they just enjoying their years? Uh, yes. My dad works at Shoppers Food Warehouse. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yes. And um, he actually, when we moved here, he worked at McDonald's for a few years. Um, and then he moved to Shoppers uh, Food Warehouse as a butcher. Okay. And he's been there for almost 30 years now since we moved. Okay. And he's going to retire probably in the next few years. Oh, that's he's nice. Gonna, that's nice. Are yeah. you going to look have, I guess they call it a mother-in-law suite. Are you guys going to move them into where you guys are when they get older? Or so you? I would love to, but mom doesn't do well with dogs. Oh. So here's here's where the cultural nuances come in. <laughs> okay. She thinks dogs are dirty and have diseases and it's very cultural. Although like little by little, she's changing her like mindset. She hasn't even been to our, ho to our house because she doesn't. Really? From her own mind, she's a bit like OCD and she's, you know. Okay. But I, I think small steps, small steps, she is opening up. Look at you. Yeah. Teaching mom. Oh, my God. So, wait a minute. Sorry. You didn't have pets in Lebanon. We have do beautiful German shepherds out there, but they're always outside protecting new villas or houses. Oh. And they're not pets. They're like guard dogs. Really? So, they're barking. They show their teeth. So, it's, there's always that aspect of fear. And, and I actually was chased by a dog when I was back in Lebanon. So, I had fear when we got our first dog. Like, really, I was afraid of that him is for a month. And you over another fear that you overcame. Look totally. at that. Thank you. So so wait a minute. So and yes. because I don't know, when you say that they're guard dogs, yeah. are they how do you say this? With a company or they're just <laughs> roaming? They are roaming around your house. Uh and like you may have um uh, uh so homes that are fenced. Okay. Uh, so they're there, but they're there to to, to not allow anybody to come in unless the owner says you can come in and that from that idea. So they're not pets. You don't pet them. I <laughs> no mean, way. I'll, yes, unless they know you, like um, like you could pet them, their specific job is to guard the house so nobody else enters like the premises. Oh my. Although now, and you know, I, I think throughout the whole world, like um, not just Lebanon, is the whole idea of, of um, um, 
of uh, pets is, you know, changing. Okay. So like there are a lot of them that have pets and they love them. And it's they're, 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 like, they're not viewed as a protective thing for the family. They're a child of the family or a part of the family. Oh my God. There's been you a know? big transition. Now we have yeah. pet moms and yeah. yeah then yes. the care for people and people say, well, I love people, pets more than people. I'm like, yeah. well, Pets don't argue with you. Well, <laughs> pets honestly, don't have an opinion. Well, let's say Craig says he loves he loves dogs more than people. Literally, yeah, yeah, people, uh, <laughs> yeah. They don't argue with you. Yes. They don't. There's no real conflict. Yeah. They're always happy to see you. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm reading here. You says yeah. in the past few years alone, yeah. you have sold more than 250 million dollars of residential real estate to discerning buyers and sellers. How does that feel yeah. to even though you look at successes in your life compartmentalized and success does not equal dollar value, yeah. how does that feel when you look over your history book um, of coming from Lebanon, coming here, not even speaking English, now to ma- being the, a major player in the real estate business? Look, it feels really good to have been able to really listen to the voice within and not subscribe to other people's stories, even my parents, okay. the story that they wanted me to have. Uh, and that when you follow your heart and you do listen mm-hmm. to that voice, it leads you to good things, whether financial or not financial, bliss, emotional contentment, control of your world in a sense, right? Of yes. your own destiny. Okay. You're the creator. Uh, so that would be my answer to that Okay. from that perspective. So it, you have, um, I am just want to make sure I have the language. So you have yeah. a portfolio of businesses, of real estate. Yes. 250, over $250 million in the past eight years? I want to say Six five years. years. Five years. That five years. Yes. What was the first property that you sold? Do you remember the first property that you oh sold? Oh, my goodness. That's a very good question. <laughs> Not being put on the spot. Ay, ay, ay. The no, very... I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't, yes. but one of the first properties yes, that you the sold. The first, first one, ay, ay, ay. Um... Or one of your most memorable, because you seem like someone who's very in tune. Like when I walk into a property, because yeah. I've cleaned homes, yes. I've cleaned warehouses, yes. I work in retail, I yes. love talking to people. Yes. I have memories of when I went to clean a home and my daughter took yeah. something that was being thrown away and made something of it. That's a memory for me. I'm yes. just like, wow. Yes. So just anything that's memorable in the in real estate early you, on. Yes. Um, I'm going to answer that from a smaller, different perspective, okay. only because I, I truly feel each human or person find that space for them. Okay. And it's literally meant for them. Okay. And what's really like memorable all the time for me is the experience when we go through the whole journey, like with the clients, whether they're, or whether they are selling or buying to find that space or that end of the, you know, end of the journey and the joy and the new relationship we just embarked on, right? Yes. Or now you're friends forever. Yes. So that's always resonates with me and you feel it in your heart. Oh, you do. And you feel the gratitude and they thank you. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a co-creation. Oh, yeah. We did it together. Oh, Plus absolutely. the universe and God, whatever you want to yeah. say. Yeah. We are a, I think that um, creative people and there are a certain breed of people that work well with people. Yes. There are some people that are cubicle people. Someone told yes. me, I'm not a cubicle person. I wouldn't I be able to stand behind a cubicle all day and punch numbers? That's not yes. me. Yes. Very gregarious. And what you were just sharing about um, when you were just pressing your heart against your chest. When you have a conversation with a person and they walk away, it's just like, oh my God. Yes. When will I talk? <laughs> like, no, sir. Yes. When will I talk to them again? When will I see them again? Totally. It's a heartfelt connection. Totally. And um you know, sometimes you have to, you know, learn how to cut it off. There yes. there's, there's the there yes. times. So that's an art too. Yes. Of being able to do that. <laughs> maneuvering those. Yeah, it's little... <laughs> a maneuvering. Yeah. So yeah. um what's next for the Tony Ghazi group? Are you um, looking for a new international agents for your company or what's new for 2023? Yes. Look, I, I'm i not a big planner. Okay. I really go with the flow. And okay. this is how my life has been. Whatever the universe like throws, you know, at the time, like we'll go for it. You don't have a calendar. Uh, no, I'm very organized. <laughs> okay, let's let's. let's okay. I'm so, if you see my calendar, because we're flowing, I'm just like, come on. You, no, no, no. The calendar is booked when it comes to specific things. Yeah. Yes, but in terms of the future and how big the team may be, yeah, I really rely on 
uh, uh, the universe to bring those and for me to feel it in my heart when that happens. Okay. Everything is heart-based. Okay. Uh, and you just feel the connection and you, there's like an, there's a real like knowing of what could happen. I know the impossible is very possible. There yes. is no impossible in my world that doesn't exist. Yes. Everything is a possibility. It's all about timing sometimes. Okay. And just where you are. Um, but we're really excited to serve whoever's going to come our way, who we're going to attract by our frequency and vibration of who we are. Okay. You know? So mm. I want to ask, and I think there, I guess it is markets yeah. for real estate. Yeah. What is the, I guess like Sotheby's or those people that have upscale real estate, yes. what is the lowest dollar amount? Because I don't know that you will set a house for, I guess, and I guess the sky is the limit. Yes. But what is the like median selling price for your company that you will accept? Because you... That's a very Go good ahead. question. Okay. And I think this is where it separates our group and, um, and, specifically, and specifically specifically, my philosophy. I always tell my agents or my team, don't ever invest in the commission of what you're getting. Mm. Invest in people mm. and the relationship and the humans. It doesn't matter how much they're spending with you. You don't know their sphere of influence. You don't know mm. their network. You don't know he could be the son of X, Y, Z. Yeah, you're, you're right. at work. I just bought a house today. The boss may be looking for, who knows? Do not ever invest in the amount of the commission and we help everybody. I've helped literally college kids that just graduated from school making whatever, $200,000 transaction up to like in the, um, you know, umpteen millions. We invest in people. That's okay. my philosophy that I've shared with 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 my team because that's what I believe. And and our service does not fluctuate because you're a royal family, you're a VP, you're a CEO, or you're a student. Service is the same all across the board. Wow. That's how I feel, and that's what I imparted on them. I can't force people to do that. I can only uh, yeah. assist them in, in in that philosophy, and it's really served me well. I I could see you teaching your brand of genuineness yes. to other real estate professionals and service industries. Because TED Talks are big sure. and YouTube is big, TikTok is big. Yeah. I really hope that you get into that because it's infectious. Yes. You really have an ability to draw people in and it's not really about numbers, but you, it says don't chase money, chase what you love and you yes. will make money. Yes. That's what I'm getting from you. Yes. It The money will come. The yes. money fluctuation changes, recession, no recession, yes. job loss or whatever. It's very infectious. Thank you. And uh, no, I thank you because you're coming on here. gives me a different perspective of uh, what's important and what's marketability. Yes. Um, when you market yourself, you are the market. Years ago, someone said, if you want this job, you better sell yourself. Yeah. You're really selling it. You're Thank really, you. not even just real estate. You're yes. selling a relationship. Yes. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm just being. Okay. It's even beyond that. You're okay. just being a human that we are. Okay. We all are. We all have that capacity like in us. But because of all the limited belief systems, you know, of our society, all the like matrix that they drew for us, how life should be. You do this, you get here, you do that, you get there. Yeah. We get stuck in this box. Yeah. But when you break away from the box and be the beautiful soul that you are and come from that space. No glass ceilings. No, no glass ceilings. You are. You are who you interact. Who yes. You are. You interact with who you are. Like they say, you are what you eat or yeah. something of that sort. <laughs> yeah. This is what I'm trying yes, to say. Yes, I get it. I you get it. You attract who you are. And yeah. I really believe it. I live it every day. And I, I, there's a knowing in my heart that this is how life is. Okay. This is who we all are. On Every Across level. Every level. Boundaries. Every industry. Every boundary. How often do you visit Lebanon and go home? So that's the funny thing. I haven't been to Lebanon like since we moved here because they had a drafting system. You got drafted into the military if you cross the border. Really? Yeah, but now it's been obsolete for the past few years, I think. So now we could go freely. So I didn't want to mess with it because if you go through the airport and they say, okay, you have to serve. I don't. I wouldn't have the chance to come back and say, "No, oh, let me close these things up." And 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 I don't believe in war, so that wasn't yeah. part of. I don't believe in killing. That or is that interesting. I didn't know that. That's a piece of history I wasn't aware of. Yeah, certain countries like may still have that, but ours just ended a few years back. Okay. So and may I add, you know yeah. why 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 it end? I guess yeah. they were implemented it because of the need. So why did Perhaps. it end? I'm not sure of all those political. Okay. I mean, it's not. I'm not sure if it's still feasible in a sense. I mean, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not huge on politics. It's not okay. my vibration. Okay. But, um, but that's one thing I knew I didn't want to. Oh, be yeah. Oh, I know in. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Like, no. Uh, I could serve in other ways. Gotcha. And you, you, know? you, necess you do too. So I guess yeah. you're 
then your parents will be able to go back very soon to see other family Yes, and they've which been. Is, yeah. Oh, they have. Yeah, they have. Oh, and they, good, and good, I mean, good. like we always do FaceTimes and, and oh, we have oh, aunts yeah. and uncles. So, so like, thank God for the internet and yeah. all these Zoom things. It opened up. It could, you could bring the world to you without being there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Smaller and bigger at the same time. Yes. No question. Give sure. me a picture of Lebanon. What is a life in when you were younger? What is a day like in Lebanon? Oh my God, Lebanon is beautiful. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Lebanese. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very small country. It's because I think it's as big as Connecticut maybe, or it looks okay. very tiny. Uh, you have the mountains on one side, you have the ocean on the other side, uh, which is the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. We used to go skiing in the morning. And then we go to the beach in, in the afternoon. No. Yes, it's only like 30 minutes. I mean, of course, with traffic, it may take longer. But if there's no traffic, you drive the whole country like from one space or not from one part to another in, in one hour. So it's a small country, but it's beautiful. Uh, the cuisine is amazing. Like Lebanese is oh. incredible. Uh, the Lebanese people are super hospitable. Um, Armenian. Are, we have 1%. Armenians there, yes. The Ar Kardashians are Armenians. They are, are Armenians. I mean, do you know them personally? You can I don't. <laughs> <laughs> can you but do? they can go to our website. There no. you go. <laughs> they, if you're listening. <laughs> yes, I know, right? But that is so... Yeah. Yeah. I haven't... I've never been... Uh, sure. um, I've been to South America, but yeah. that picture of... you know, I, And I had a conversation earlier with our previous guest. Yeah. When you live in one area all your life, you're in a kind of a box that, that this is all there is. Yes. That picture that you gave me of being able to ski yes. and then to go to the beach, the visual of this of that is just kind of mind-blowing. Oh. And we're over 5,000 years old, so you have a lot of beautiful churches that were built thousands of years ago. You have all these... Um, Oh God, like the pantheons that you see in, in Roman Greece. Roman ruins. Roman ruins, thank you. All over there. And actually, like Phoenicians, if you know what the Phoeni who, who the Phoenicians are, um, they uh, uh, Language. began the alphabet. There you go. That started in Lebanon. So, <laughs> f f so, good job. Uh, so Phoenicia was Lebanon at like one point, yeah. uh, and maybe under the sea, but there's a lot of history. Um, it says you have nonstop nightlife and discotheques. Okay. Let Party. Me <laughs> let me tell you about the Lebanese way of living. Whether you have money or not, you live the high life. Like okay. you enjoy. And we have amazing clubs. I'm looking up flights now. <laughs> yes, I love it. You have amazing clubs. We're very French influenced, so it's very Parisian. Okay. All the, like, you know, haute couture of whatever you want to think of is there. Um, it's kind of like the central western like mecca of um of of the middle east so sometimes okay. you find a lot of um um like people from the arab countries come there cuz it's kind of like western arab and not very Middle Eastern. Okay. With no judgment to the rest of the Middle East, of sure. course. Sure. I, I love my people. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? But uh, but it has that rep. Okay. Nate, give yes. me some of the foods that I will be familiar with from Lebanese fare. Um, you probably have 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 um, heard of tabbouleh. Oh, love it. That's that's love Lebanese. It. Have you heard of kebbi? No. Um, so it's basically basically um, like ground beef that's mixed with uh, like borgul, which is um, um, like crushed wheats, mm. and they kind of um, it's baked. Amazing, amazing. You probably have had it. You don't remember. Don't know name. what. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's hundreds, thousands of. Oh. I don't know. I can't remember all of do them. Do you get it here? Is where, where do you go if you want food? I go from to home? my mother. <laughs> you know, people. Mom's house is the best. It is. People ask me what's the best Lebanese restaurant. Like my mom. <laughs> You know what I mean? But no, wow. that's great less, like restaurant. Like you have Lebanese Taverna. Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, like you also have Albi, A-L-B-I. Uh, okay. Uh, which is in Southwest Waterfront. It just opened five months ago. Okay. Uh, and and like that means my heart oh. in, in Arabic. Um, God, you have also Mijana, like which is in Arlington, M-I space uh, J A N A. It's okay. great. Okay. And it's very close to authentic. Um, and if you have, I mean, there's, it's great. Oh, it, look, if you've God. never had Lebanese restaurant, wherever you go, it's going to be like, wow. Yeah, Lebanese. I think that there's one near Potomac um, somewhere. Oh, God, I just drove past one of Potomac Mills or something. I forgot, yeah, but sure. I know. Yes, I've, yes, oh, my. Yes, yes. I, if I were you, tell me. You should add that piece of history okay. on your website or Thank something you. because. 
that's you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's the Tony Gazi group, but it's Tony Gazi sharing a piece of him that you give people face to face. But also, that is so interesting. But mom's house, oh. I love that. Idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Mom may have another career. Yeah, I know totally. mom in a food truck. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to spend all day there. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Wow. So yeah. would you like to share anything else um, about the Tony Gazi group? Um, your website? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, Tony A. Uh, gazigroup.com okay so first name middle initial last name group.com okay and um, social media you said TikTok TikTok Facebook, of Facebook, course. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And Instagram. And Instagram. I so, think that's all, right? Yeah, is I think. Any? Oh, God. I don't know. so many new ones popping up. So that's enough. That's you enough. You to find out the information. <laughs> I've, oh, my God. I've enjoyed yeah. this so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out to um, visit with us here and be a guest on the Hub Podcast. And whatever your future endeavors are, you're always welcome back to come and chat with us. We've had such a fun time. So thank you, everyone, for joining us with Tony Gazi of the Tony a Gazi group in real estate here in the DMV um, here on the hub and guys we'll speak to you next time here on another episode take care oh my god oh my god was that good can I give you a hug this was wonderful